Hey, it's Mark Podolsky Lenghi with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's podcast, the art of passing the podcast, my co host Scott Todd is nowhere to be found. I think he's on the boat. So hopefully he'll jump in here at some point, but um, we may have had some kind of scheduling conflict. The process is not 100% yet. Anyways, I'm in the new car office. Garage office, I'm loving it. Hopefully the audio is okay, not too reverberating. But my guest today is really interesting. Um, an entrepreneur in a space that is, you know, very, uh, you know, near and dear to my own heart, and it should be near and dear to everyone's heart that does marketing. And if you're in any kind of business, you're marketing. So please. Welcome, Bobby Lynn from Veloso.com. Bobby, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Hello, everyone. So, Bobby, tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. What made you start Veloso? And just, what is Veloso? Oh, there he is. Scott Todd. He just shows up. I don't know. Landmoto.com. Hostingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Nothing like crashing a podcast, huh? (laughs) Bobby meets Scott, Scott Bobby. So so Scott Bobby is the owner of Veloso.com. And um, Bobby, I was asking Bobby, like, how he started his journey and and what is Veloso? Nice. Well, okay, just to uh, give you a brief rundown, uh, I've always been into videos. Uh, you know, I, I'm a snowboarder by heart and uh, I've spent, um, you know, a good amount of time uh, on a board on a mountain and being, being a season there, chasing the snow around the world, uh, you know, we, we use technology a lot, you know, cameras, filming each other and it's just really fun creating uh, something cool that, to share with everyone. And that's kind of what snowboarding is. It's all about sharing. You know, I look at the tricks I've learned or check out today's weather, um, look at where I'm at in the world. Uh, So I've always been into that space. And uh, after, you know, snowboarding around the world, uh, I got into car design over in Italy. Uh, So over there, I picked up um, 3D modeling. And realized, uh, you know, car design wasn't really for me. Uh, And more so, uh, you know, I was told that if you work for some uh, fancy, like, you know, if you work for Ferrari, let's say, uh, as a designer, then you'll definitely not be able to drive one or you won't won't be able to afford to buy one. Uh, So I figured, well, why not just uh, follow what I really love? And that was um, creating videos. And so one thing led after, you know, one thing, led from one to another and uh, we've created this platform uh, called Veloso. Basically it's uh, an online video production marketplace. It's a platform for uh, small to medium sized businesses, especially uh, real estate companies or agents uh, to get a professionally made video to showcase uh, their products, their, their space, their, the real estate at a really affordable price. Uh, we're talk, you know, the internet now is bringing everyone together and has been for a very long time. Uh, and so there are these platforms already out there like Freelancer and, and Upwork, uh, which used to be called Odesk. But there was nothing really to bring the whole production, video production crew together. And so what we've done is we've um, got a network of you know, uh, professional um, videographers, voiceover artists, uh, video editors from around the world. So essentially, you can have someone come shoot your real estate, no matter where you are, uh, have somebody else halfway around the world edit it, uh, and it's another person from another place you know, add their voice. And in the end, you, know, you don't have to touch any files. All you've done is you've been on our website, and then at the end, you get this unique video that's tailored just for you, made at, uh, you know, ad agency quality for a fraction of the cost. And really, that's what internet and sharing is all about. 
So essentially it's like an exchange, right? It's like a creative exchange of people who are interested in helping you with your, your video production. Exactly, exactly. And it gives them a chance to, um, you know, I guess pursue something that they love doing. Um, I mean, we've spoken to many uh, voiceover artists who only specialize in voice uh, in providing uh, quality, you know, uh, voice artist reels. And it's just so amazing uh, the passion that uh, they, they put into their work. And there's certain branding to, to, to voice as well. So in every sort of uh, scenario, whether it's uh, the voice or, or um, the story writing or the videography, there's, you know, there, there are people that are passionate about every single section of those things. Can hear you, Mark. Can't hear you. Mark, we can't hear you for some reason. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you. <laughs> All right. I apologize, everybody, for the bad audio. There you go. AV issues. Okay. So, um, does this sound better? Yeah. Much better. Okay. So, so, Bobby, how did you make the transition from basically, you know, having a, a passion for video into becoming an entrepreneur and, and starting Veloso and and what were the challenges that you faced and wh how did you see the, uh, that opportunity besides the fact that, you know, you yourself saw some pain points in there? Okay. So uh, to be very honest, uh, you know, before Veloso, I started uh, another company, um, another startup. Now, uh, I've been through my fair share of, I guess, uh, failures or mistakes, let's say, um, I guess uh, we we kind of trialed. We, we didn't really. Tr so the mistake that I, I did with the other startup was we built something without testing it, and I had this great idea. I kind of poured all my savings into it, and we thought, well, people must love this because I love it, you know. And so, uh, and I thought, well, let's focus on that because it's brand new technologies and it's in the 3d printing space uh and then we just realized well not we i had to realize that was that was the you know that's the key tipping point there um you kind of have to admit it to yourself um kind of man up about things uh in a certain way just to tell yourself hey um you know what you're doing is probably wrong uh, so that uh, I've come to gr grips with it and I kind of fell back into video because it, video is, is something that I really love and I keep getting requests for it. And so we thought, well, how can we help all these requests? Um, because being a, I was also in the visual effects industry for a little bit. And while I was uh, in the industry, I was getting requests to do, you know, wedding videos, getting requests to do uh, product videos for people. And I was also collaborating with a friend of mine who I met from the car design uh, university over in Torino, Italy. And he was also working on some projects in video. And so we were sort of helping each other. And I just realized, well, hold on, he's halfway around the world and we're working on the same project together just to make sure that it gets, um, you know, due on deadline. Uh, and, one thing led after, you know, one thing led to the next. And then I realized, well, we could build a platform that could help uh, a lot of people uh, and also not just help the uh, businesses that need these videos made, but we can also uh, provide an opportunity for people to keep doing what they love doing. Um, where I'm in uh, Macedonia right now, uh, this is, this is to do with our business, but, what I'm doing here is actually not to do with video. I'm setting up uh, our IT team over here. And I just have to say the, the freelance market here is thriving. And uh, if anyone knows, I think the freelance market all over the world uh, is just forever growing. And so we're definitely going to see more and more of these uh, individuals pursuing their passion whether it's, you know, videography, video editing, um, there's going to be a lot more of them uh, and it's really better for everyone and it's just a transformation that's uh, taking place right now.
I love it. I love it. I mean, Scott Todd, there's a lot of pain points in, in videography. Are, it, yeah. it, is, it is time consuming. You might love it, but I mean, just to edit like in, in a professional or prosumer kind of program yourself, like Final Cut Pro, how long does it take? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a while, right? Like it, it, it depends on, you know, how many takes you have in different video scenes. But uh, how much is something like this going to cost me, like to, to have a video made? Okay, so like I said, a fraction of what ad agencies cost. I think we did, uh, we did an evaluation of the projects that we've done, and it's like one-sixth the price of, um, what ad agencies cost. Now I haven't got a uh, particular figure on it just because the, the, the way the model that we've got in place on our website, it's, we're not supplying a fixed price. It's sort of like, um, because every project is different. Every project has different requirements and you're going to meet, uh, you know, video professionals with different calibers, right? Uh, so, Obviously, if you're working with someone that's worked on transformers, right, and you want them to do uh, really high tech stuff on your video, then that's going to cost more. But it's not going to cost as much as if you were going if you were going to DreamWorks and saying, "Hey, can you make me a video for my company?" Right. Uh, but in saying that, um, I just want to come back to the point about. Uh, freelancing. Now, the reason why freelancing exists is I, you know, Scott, for example, it sounds like you've delved into video a little bit and so, so is Mark. And so have I, and we all love video because uh, it's just amazing about, you know, it's amazing what you can create. Um, and it's, it's fun. But the thing is, it takes, like Mark said, it takes time. And I guess to most of us, uh, we kind of have to say, well, how much is our time worth? Is it worth me doing all the stuff? But hold on, what about my actual job kind of thing? So I think that's where, um, you know, the, uh, the freelance market really thrives is because there are people who do value their time over the amount of time that they're willing to put into it. So they'll rather uh, give that money to somebody else that can do it uh, at a less rate, uh, at a less cost, sorry, but with a higher quality because they just churn through those uh, tasks. You know, yeah. that, that's what they do on a daily basis. Do you see a, a like a, a change in the marketplace? Because, you know, with the introduction of like Facebook live or YouTube live, you know, the, the Periscope, all this stuff. I think that there's a, um, I think that the marketplace is willing to accept less quality and not need this polished brand just here. Let me just use my cell phone to grab video. I don't need to edit it. I'll just put it out there to the world and the world is pretty forgiving. Is that, I mean, is, is that real? I, 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 I'm glad that we're going this direction because I was, uh, it's okay. Live streaming is something that we've uh, adopted. Yeah. Uh, now it really depends on what the goal is because some people, some businesses, let's say real estate companies, I, I believe real estate companies, I believe real estate companies won't make videos to earn money from the number of views. Okay. This is what I believe. I believe real estate companies are actually earning money from the real estate, right? So the videos to entice them. So then in that scenario, you know, so what if they have, let's say, 500,000 views. Is that really, you know, let's say a million views came from uh, New Zealand, but the real estate company is trying to sell a property in California. It's not really going to, you know, turn into dollar signs, although they might get a couple of bucks from, uh, from YouTube. Uh, so it really depends on what the goal is, but let's talk about uh, the live streaming. I think live streaming is fantastic. Um, and the reason being is, uh, it's, it gives the, uh, the business owner or the product owner, uh, or real estate owner, um, sort of true engagement to the viewer. But not only that, the way that we've adopted it is that we've, we've added it to our shooting process. 
So what does that mean? It means that as we shoot a commercial or as we shoot sort of, um, you know, uh, let's say uh, a minute video uh, reel for, for a product or for a real estate company, we can also stream it live uh, directly to their target market. So it gives them a bit of a preview as to what's to come. And as you guys are aware, uh, previews work so that, you know, when you go through that your Facebook news feeds, for example, um, you're more likely going to click on something that you've seen before. You know, if something's uh, kind of new, but it's not extremely attractive, you're probably going to skip it. But let's say you look at that, um, you look at your phone again a week later, it's the same thing. And you're going to be wondering, well, hold on, why have I seen that twice? But I don't know what that's about. So that's when you click on it and, you know. So uh, live streaming for us, for our customers, uh, work really well because of engagement and also because it's sort of like a, pre, uh, a preview of what's to come and it just increases the engagement. So when, when you talk about quality, uh, Live streaming quality, yes. Uh, I really, pers- uh, this is personal preference. I, I, we've got no stats on this, but I'm pretty sure you guys are aware. I really dislike watching something live, but it's all pixelated, right? It's so pixelated, you don't really know what's going on, but you can hear audio. Um, and that may be due to the internet speed or whatnot, or maybe due to the broadcasting software that the uh, company is using. Uh, but now if we're talking about uh, other videos, like the traditional ones, not the live streaming uh, parts, then I, you know, there are stats showing that uh, if it's more professionally made, then the person that's watching is going to uh, give like um, I think their attention span is longer or, you know, they stay on the video longer or, uh, and also if there is a call to action at the end, obviously you're going to have a a higher amount of traffic to your, to to your website. Well, that's the key idea. So obviously to have all those things like good quality video call to action, you need, video editors or you need people that knows what they're doing. Um, and I think that's very difficult for someone just with a mobile phone or, you know, with a trying to do it themselves pretty much. So, so logistically from a technical standpoint, then I do a Periscope video and we'll talk about the different live streaming platforms in a second. Sure. Let's say for example, I do a Periscope video. I save it to my phone. I upload it to Veloso and say, make it pretty. Right. Is that, right. is that how it would work? Sure. It can work like that. It can work like that. So I mean, obviously you'd want more detail, but <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. So ba- basically uh, you go to our website, you click get started and we've got, um, you fill out uh, a few questions and we take you through the steps. And yes, there is a place for you to upload your footage if you have any raw footage yourself. And so uh, I think or not, I think I, we have had a lot of requests of YouTubers wanting YouTube intros. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. So if I had to put a gun to your head, Bobby, yeah. And say you can only live stream on one platform right now, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Meerkat. Is there another one that I'm forgetting? That's big. No, I think those are the biggest. Oh, those are the four biggest. So uh, there's a gun to your head, Bobby, in Macedonia. <laughs> but you got like, to pick one. Or, or, would, you, or, or would, you, would you make the argument and say, Mark, look, you got to be everywhere. Have four you know, iPads, iPhones, video them all, the one, you know, each okay. time. What would you okay. say? But then you're like this. Hey, Meerkat. Hey, Twitter. Hey, you know, yeah. it's like... Actually, uh, if, if I was to choose one, then I'll choose Facebook. Uh, because uh, the, the thing that I think YouTube uh, is behind on is the whole social interaction, right? Um, on Facebook, we're, we're much more connected on everything. It's not just who you're following, but it's also the interests and, and the sharing. Uh, sure, you can 
share on uh, YouTube, but most people share from YouTube to Facebook, right? So uh, I think if I was to choose one, definitely Facebook. Uh, but your, your second point saying that you need four iPads for four different platforms, we actually stream to uh, multiple Facebook groups and pages uh, and walls and also multiple YouTube channels at the same time. So how, how do you do that? Can <laughs> I do that? Is that a below yes. snow? Yes. You, well, actually it's, you know, it's, it's not through us. It's um, there's all this great software out there that you can use. Uh, one that you can use is it's free. It's um, it's, oh, what do you call it? It's uh, open source. Uh, it's called OBS. So I think it's called open broadcasting software. And uh, the thing is, sure, you only f see that you can only stream to one, but, uh, you know, you can open, open multiple OP OBS uh, programs. You can open it multiple times and you can actually stream it to multiple places. But there are also uh, different uh, software out there that you can sort of subscribe to or, you know, pay a little fee for that allows you to stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. That's, that's for me. I think I've been getting off of live streaming because just, I've been so busy and it's, it's very hard to, you know, kind of motivate. Well, I mean, what about you, Scott? Like, yeah, it's, it's, it really is. Um, I mean, I, I think that you have to make a, a, uh, an effort to, to show up every single day with that. Uh, and really content creation is every single day is hard. You know, like it's, it's hard to do a Periscope or a Facebook live every single day. Um, you know, I know that there's some, some geniuses out there that can do it, but I think that it's, it's really kind of hard. One of the things that you, you did mention though, like um, was the open source. And I, I did read about that recently where you could use this open source software and kind of stream to Facebook live and YouTube live and, and all these other platforms at the same time. Um, the other thing that interests me that you said is that, um, and maybe this is, maybe this is a channel that you guys, a segment that you guys go after or want to go after, but you know, like I, I did, um, I did a, a vlog for, uh, I don't know, 40 days and I just got extremely busy work moving. I got like days and days of days of footage, like unedited and it would seem to me like, man, a website like yours would be perfect. I, I do this content. I upload it. While I'm sleeping, you guys are compiling my daily episode together <laughs> yes. right? so that I can release it the next day uh, and you know, t leveraging different time zones and everything because it, it's fun. I enjoy that aspect of it. But, man, the editing. <laughs> yeah. like I was, I was out of town moving – in meetings with Mark and it, the whole thing just comes to a complete grind, like standstill. Yeah. So there are oh, I need cheap, man. I need cheap. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So wouldn't it be great if there was like a, a machine that can just do it all for you, but you know, we're going to, we're going to do that with AI. And so it'll, it'll be there one day. So for now, uh, YouTube, your channels, where they earn enough money, uh, you know, to have a good stable income. I bet all those guys, all of them, or if not all, let's say 99% of them will have an editor of some sort. Right. Uh, but you know, it's, I guess it's about the tipping point. Uh, some people, obviously editing does cost money. Uh, and if you're not making money from, you know, your, your YouTube channel or let's say YouTube channel is one of your areas where you, uh, have some sort of call to action. So let's say, uh, let's say you're not getting enough traffic from your, uh, video market marketing, then I guess you're going to have to say, well, is it worth spending money on this? You know, because you're going to have to stick it out for, for a lot longer. Uh, and if you look at um, vloggers these days, I've seen a vlog 
of someone just, uh, you know, they're, they're like making, they're making dinner and it's not like, well, it's, wow, what they're making is amazing. It, they put it in the microwave and they put it, turn it on for 30 seconds. And they've got like, you know, first day, they've got like two or 300,000 views. That was me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, yes, so Bobby, how is that possible? How are people getting, you know, these, these sort of these mundane type of events? Okay, so this is my, something yeah. to watch. This is my take on it, uh, and it's obviously, in my opinion, it's not something that's set in stone or anything. But you guys have all heard of uh, was it his name is uh, Tube or Fuzi? Ah, oh, Fuzi Tube. Do you know the guy that I'm talking about? I no, okay. I, kid do. I think he's got a channel called Fuzi Tube, and uh, he's a celebrity on YouTube. And if you look at his earlier videos, uh, he was doing pranks, right? And then, because uh, his videos were all really short at the start, and then he went from pranks, and then he uh, did he compiled them and repeated some uh, through some other channels, and then as he built up his his followers or his customer base, he started going to longer segments. So he started filming more about, you know, uh, discussions about uh, relationships or, or I don't know, fights or something like that or arguments. So there are all these really controversial topics. And then his segments just became longer and longer. But I don't think it's the long segments that get you the view viewers. I do think it's repetition builds reputation. So I think it's just that he's done it for such a long time and he's followed the trend. And so it's not like he made one video, then he got the formula right. It was kind of like he made thousands of videos and uh, he stuck in it and, uh, he, you know, he just kept doing it. And then what people started following I think that's the, um, I think that's really the secret because I, I know a lot of people. In fact, I was just on a call, uh, right now before this call. And I was talking to someone, they were telling me like that they wanted to build a YouTube channel. Um, but it really is like a long haul type of a deal. It's not a, yeah. it's not a 30 day deal. It, mm -hmm. it is a year and a half, two years. Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk is well known for saying that when he started his wine TV, nobody was even watching that thing it, right. until like 18, 20 months in. And he was still doing it because he was betting on the, on the long, the long bet, you know, the long day on the long, long haul. Uh, and then all of a sudden he, he pops and he has the success and people look at it like, Oh, this guy came out of nowhere. I could go do that too. And if you're going to go down that path, then you can, you can have success, but you know, you gotta, you gotta commit to that thing for two years. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, essentially, I, I, yeah. show, it's about showing up and being prolific. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, it's essentially a job now. Like it's, you know, it's sort of like a career uh, and believe it or not, they, there are classes to go to, uh, to learn how to, uh, you know, build a good uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so essentially, you know, uh, I think the times are changing the way where we're actually not seeing the bigger picture yet, but you know, these celebrities, these people that earn money from YouTube, uh, you know, they're earning a well, a good enough, uh, sort of salary to keep doing what they're doing. And other people are following suits. Some people are making it. Some people are quitting before they get to the top. Uh, but, it's like any sort of career path you follow. You kind of have to specialize and just dig deep. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So, you know, from the, from the art of passive income perspective, right? Mm -hmm. When you set out to design Veloso, right? did you think about the passive income element of it? You've got a platform, right? You're setting right. up software. You're building out this team and then Bobby Lynn can sit, can sit back, can sit back and be like, okay, here's my passive 
element. I mean, you know, between you and me, there, there's really nothing truly passive, yeah. right? But at some point, right, you, you don't have to deal with the customer. I can upload my footage. I don't have to deal with Bobby Lynn. And right. the scene continues to generate revenue. Is, was, what was the thought process in, in creating sort of this, this business model? Well, essentially the, uh, the idea of sitting back and not doing anything and, you know, having money come in, I think uh, that's something that we, uh, I think that's some sort of, um, it's a bit of a myth, isn't it? Because we, we'd like to believe it exists and maybe it does, but I personally haven't met anyone ever that's kind of said, hey, this is what my life is like. And look, I'm not doing anything. Even the really wealthy, uh, you know, I've, even the, I, maybe you guys met a lot more wealthy guys than, me, than I have. But um, even the, you know, really, you know, um, well off uh, individuals, you know, people that's built empires, uh, when I meet them, they're super busy. They've got like, you know, 12 things going on at any one time, people calling them and, uh, and it seems like they've got this calm about them. Right. Whereas I was thinking, Oh, if I was that guy, I'd probably be really anxious and kind of really nervous and, you know, having to do so many things, but they've got this calm about them. So my, my thought is it's, (sighs) I guess you have to do it for long enough that, um, well, to do it for a long enough uh, amount of time, you kind of really have to believe in what you're doing, right? So, uh, but then you come across all these problems. So in business, you're going to have problems. Uh, whatever you're building, you're going to have problems. For example, Veloso, uh, we've met a problem, and that's kind of why I'm in Macedonia setting up this team. Uh, and every time you deal with problems, you're kind of resolving one, and with every single one that you resolve, you kind of... Uh, become a master of that particular problem. So every time that you get that problem, you get less anxious, you get less nervous and you have this, you get calmer. So if we're looking at, uh, you know, those, those type of people uh, where they're earning passive income and uh, they built something that's going to run for a real long time and they just sit back. I personally think, maybe it's not like that. Most likely it's that they've dealt with enough problems to make it seem that way. But where if you, you know, look under the water, it's like a duck looks calm uh, above, but you know, the legs are sort of like, you know, going really fast. Um, You know, I I think that's what it's, that's what it's like. And so uh, this is a real long answer. I'm sorry, but coming back, uh, for myself, I think Veloso is going to be forever going. Uh, we're actually in the middle of an expansion. So our site is a bit of a standstill, even though it's fully functional right now and everything, it's, it's all great. But, you know, we're always in development. And I, I say we're in a bit of a standstill because we're putting a team together here. And uh, it's definitely taking longer than I thought. But um, after a after a month or so, you know, we're going to be ramping things up again. So uh, we're going to have new features. Uh, we're going to have our network of video professionals will be bigger. Uh, our product offerings are going to be wider. And, uh, you know, uh, I think more people will be, more people will uh, be able to use it. I like, all right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, Scott Todd. Mark. Is Veloso for us? You know, I I do see some applications uh, for it. I don't know, um, you you know, like for what we try to do, we try to keep pretty lean and pretty cost effective. And um, I think that there's some applications there, but at the same time, I think that – you know, it, it's it's probably a rare instance for us as opposed to a more regular basis, right? 
Right, right. So, so Bobby, not for you to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I went on this Art of Passive Income podcast. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Mar- it's not for Mark or Scott. Um, who is your ideal customer, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily have to even be from real estate because yeah. you have a lot of people who listen to the podcast that just like passive income. Yeah. So I can tell you the people that's come through our platform. Uh, we've had people get their wedding videos made. Uh, we've had people that want to go on Kickstarter, right? But um, they don't know how to shoot video. So Kickstarter now, it's sort of like you need to have a kick-ass video because without one, it's not really going to get the attention and, and sort of, you know, um, the momentum. So we've had people where they've got a really good products and they really believe in it, but they don't know how to shoot a video. So they come onto our platform, uh, make a request, and loads of people pitch in for us. They can, you know, they can shoot it, they can edit it, and basically uh, the client picks and chooses uh, from looking through the portfolios, and then the process begins. It begins with uh, shooting then uh, transfer data on, uh, onto our servers. And so the client d- doesn't have to touch anything and um, they've got a video made and it's posted on, on Kickstarter. So yeah, it's, it's a mixture. I guess small to medium sized businesses is a, is a good one. Uh, I think the big businesses, you know, they want to stick to, I don't know, but I'm guessing they'll stick to the, you know, sort of Ogilvy or Saatchi and Saatchi kind of, uh, big ad agencies. I, mean, I think that I think that this um, that the application here is perfect for like that. Um, more like the the medium size. You know, I'm going to say small, but small is relative, right? Small to mid sized business that really needs. Uh, like, I mean, I'm telling you, like if if I uh, if I had like a storefront. Um, or I had, you know, the need for professional video on loops in a storefront type of an application, or if I was doing a, a TV commercial or a web commercial, I definitely see that, you know, like that high, higher in production value stuff. I see you guys right there. Right. Um, right. You know, for, for us, you know, we, we sell a lot of, of uh, real estate that's, not necessarily it's like on the lower price end of the scale so essentially i could go and create a, uh, a video with you guys which i think would be phenomenal compared to you know what mark puts out but uh, <laughs> not, nonetheless it would it could easily eat into my margins to, to go do something like that yeah i mean for someone like me who has you know such a massive following of you know probably a billion people yeah <laughs> to have a professional intro outro done at one sixth the price of, you know, an ad agency that would really help my billion people followers, you know, of all these geeks kind of, it would kind of, you know, help the brand a bit where Scott might have, you know, 10 people, right? Yeah. 11 following. Uh, so for him, I just got another 12. But <laughs> let, let, let me ask you guys, uh, you know, what, what do you mean by cheap? Because again, like you mentioned, Scott, cheap is relative. So when you say cheap, I assume it means possibly, you know, w- let's talk about the world as sort of like, you know, obviously different markets around the world. We've got video editors from around the world. Uh, yeah. D- define cheap. Yeah. So like if I, if I needed a, a, a project video done so let's say that i was looking at it from you know like my own my own uh video for a property man i could i could get some video done you know it's not going to be professional recording because i'm going to send some guy out with a cell phone he's going to record a video talk over it it's probably going to be a little shaky i could go if i didn't want to appear on it no problem i could go and i could have a, a voiceover artist from Fiverr that I could hire for let's say twenty dollars, and I could match up an editor, uh, someone to edit this you know couple minute video for I don't know, less than fifty. I'm I'm into this thing for like less than a hundred dollars, right? 
Right, um, right. And for for the amount of money that we're selling a property for, I'm not going to go spend a thousand dollars. Now, if I was selling a house uh, or a million dollar house, maybe it makes sense, right? But for like for the type of land that we kind of market or, or sell it it's uh, when I say cheap I'm like a hundred dollars I'm thinking that you guys are you know your average tickets probably you know I, I I'm just guessing I'd say that your average tickets like 1200 or, or higher um, it might be a bargain I don't know the minimum the minimum price uh on Veloso is thirty dollars Wow. So yeah, we've had we've had projects go through. We've had various different projects. We've had projects go through for eighty dollars. We've had projects go through for one hundred and eighty. Uh, but then on the higher side, we've had projects go through for like three thousand dollars. So like, what's your average? T- uh, three thousand on the yeah, high end. You know, what, Bobby, if you just said this from the very beginning, oh, you I, I, it I'm all. falling back in love with you. <laughs> like, you know, and, but I think I, I think there's a lesson to be learned about being you know vague with price. Right. I think, there, I think if you came out of the gate with a range, right, we've done things from $30 all the way up to $3,000. Oh, $30. You know, you, yeah. I mean, Scott's eyes are going up at 30. I'm going up at probably, you know, 35 because <laughs> I like to overpay. Yeah. We know that Mark. Yeah. But Bobby, like, so what, what is your average, what's the average ticket out the door? Like for the website? You know, uh, for video editing, like for what you're saying, uh, if you had a really long reel and you just need someone to go through and cut it into, into like segments and stitch it together, uh, that I would imagine, like because we're a platform, right? Uh, from experience, I would imagine anywhere between, depending on how long the video, how long the reel is, let's say you're after a 30 second or one minute reel and let's say your video is let's say in total uh, your videos let's say half an hour um, I would imagine it would cost anywhere between 80 to 150 that's not bad not bad yeah All right, that's, uh, that's really good we, we've just, just, just to let you know, we've recently had um, an event video go through and they had, gosh, they had like, I think 90 videos, right? Uh, I think 91 videos go through, uh, but they're all short, short clips and some were shaky, but the video editor, he's really, really good. Um, he went through it, cut it all together, you know, cut it up, um, added music and added an intro and outro. And the whole job was uh, 120, 120 USD. Now, I'm quoting these prices from past projects, but yeah, I can't yeah, right. say, you know, that guy's going to do it for the same thing. Uh, it's pretty much a platform where you can get, you know, what you've done, well, sorry, what you want done um, at the price you want it because you're, you're looking at different proposals, you're looking at different portfolios and you get to pick. Awesome. Okay, good, good I love, deal. I love, it. I love it. All right, so Bobby, we're at that point in the podcast now where we get to put you on the spot. All right, great. I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where okay. Art of Passive Income Model listeners can go and Take action okay. and improve their businesses. Excellent. So my one tip would be uh, to fully understand who the ideal uh, customer or better yet, create a persona of your ideal customer. Now, what I mean by this is that uh, maybe you, you already have a target market and or maybe you don't, maybe you're trying to, um, you know, get a, maybe you've got customers, but not the ones that you want. So basically what you want, the idea is to uh, build your own ideal customer, you know, who are they, what, what their personality is like. So basically build a persona of your ideal customer, because once you have that, uh, whether it's video, because video is basically just um, an extension of marketing, but whether it's video or marketing, uh, you're a lot 
you're, you're more prepared at, um, you know, supplying something that's going to entice them or going to be attractive to them. If you just, you know, use all these, if you follow all these trends, uh, let's say, you know, for example, uh, SEO and, and you know, live streaming on different channels and, and all these things without really understanding, you know, what the persona of your ideal customer is, then um, you're sort of, you know, you're not really aiming in a particular direction and um, that can be costly and it's probably going to prove ineffective. So um, if you know what the persona is or what their personality is, then uh, you're going to be able to target them a lot better. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, your tip of the week. All right, Mark. So I, I've seen a, a trend. I've seen uh, web, websites like this or apps like this uh, more and more frequently. And um, I think it's kind of cool, but the website is called freewrite.org. So it's W-R-I-T-E, freewrite.org. Why have I heard of this site? Well, I think I've heard of it. What's cool about it, and I see this as a kind of a trend of – you know, one of the one of the challenges I think that people have when it comes to whether it's writing daily blog material or you know whatever journaling is, they try to think about they try to think too much about like what to put on the paper. And in this case, it basically allows you to free write, just write whatever's on your brain. It doesn't have to be right or wrong. There's like no no judgment that takes place here, and there's no editing either. So, you know, what, what you start to get from a website like this is you start to get more of like true free thinking and thoughts um, of what, you know, what people are thinking and what people are executing on. And I think it's a great way to, to just kind of journal and document what's, what's going on, you know, like what you're thinking about. Um, I thought that was kind of cool. I, I, I love it. I saw something similar where it was like write or, or lose it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Like, you know, it's the, like if you don't write fast enough, that's you'll right. start deleting it. So yeah. it, may, it forces you to go into free flow. I, I like it. Um, I'm checking it out. So my tip of the week, um, I have two tips. The first one is notion. Dot. So is it notion? Dot so have you heard of this, Bobby? No. No, I haven't. Okay, so what is it about? You know, if you want to have passive income, you got to have a good team, right? And there's so many ways to communicate with your team. And it's like, it's, like, it's almost too much, right? Um, we have all these platforms. So Notion.so is a unified workspace, right? And you can integrate it with Slack and you can do all these things. And, and even if you just wanted to write with it, it's a beautiful way to just write. So I'm playing with it. I kind of like it. Um, there is a learning curve to it, um, but it's cool. It's cool and uh, it's free. So check out notion.so and of course go to, and I'm going to spell it for you and we'll put it in the show notes, veloso.com. V is in Victor, A is in Apple, L is in Lima, O is in Oscar, S is in Sam, O is in Oscar.com. And it's really reasonably priced. We finally got it out of Bobby. It took a while, but we finally oh, got I should have started with that. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's worth uploading your footage and, and getting a quote and, you know, looking more professional um, for sure. So, uh, Bobby Lynn, are we good? We're good. We're excellent. Scott Todd, are we good? I'm good, Mark. All right. I want to remind everybody, boot camp, October 21st through 23rd. Coming up, that room is filling up fast. If you haven't registered for bootcamp yet. What are you waiting for? All the land investing clouds dissipate. Everything becomes totally clear. And most importantly, Scott Todd's going to be there. So I am. You are in Orlando. Okay, I'll, be I'll be there. I, I'm hoping you're there. Um, if you are not automating, automating, which is not my favorite word. My favorite year, word used to be Bobby free, but now automation is my, really my favorite word. Free is my second favorite word. If you're not automating your Craigslist ads, Why? Go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn how to, how, to, how to dominate and look like you're in Macedonia and <laughs> we're in deal directly, right? Um, also, if you are tired of overpaying for simple money and you want to get into the beta, 
for loangeek.io. Just email support at thelandgeek.com. Subject money, subject, simple money killer. And um, we'll talk about getting you uh, onboarded into the beta. Um, last but not least, what else are we going to plug, Scott? Go to landgeek.com. <laughs> go to landmoto.com. Like if you want some wholesale land, go to landmoto.com forward slash wholesale. Yeah. So, th- yeah. So, sorry, listener, that at the very end of the podcast, we have all these calls to action. Bobby, is this too many calls to action? No, definitely not. You, you guys are doing good. All right. Uh, my last call to action is, look, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like an entrepreneur, like Bobby Lynn, is if you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast, and we'll bribe you. Do so. We're going to send you for free the Passive Income Launch Kit, as well as an even extra special bonus, which I'm not going to tell you because it's extra special. Um, all right. Well, I want to thank Bobby Lynn from Veloso.com, Scott Todd, LandMoto.com, and ScottTodd.net, and most importantly, PostingDomination.com forward slash LandGeek. We'll see everybody next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, guys. Thanks.